Um, that's totally fine. We're just gonna get started. All right, so our workshop today is through hole soldering. Um, make sure you sign in at the link um, right here. And the link to the slides is at the bottom um, of each slide right here. So tinyurl.com slash you slay through whole slides. And uh, basically an overview of soldering. It's actually really easy and simple. Um, it might seem like really complicated at first if you've never done it, but when we actually start soldering, it's like really easy. Um, it's one of the most fundamental skills in electrical engineering. If you're in one of like the other advanced projects for IEEE, like MicroMouse or like Aircopter um, or even Ops, like you will need to know how to like use this skill eventually. Um, and soldering is essentially um, just like the physical process of using a soldering iron um, to melt a metal called solder and that will conductively connect to metallic surfaces. Um, that's just like another complicated way of saying like gluing two objects together, except that your glue is solder and your two objects are metallic and you just want them to stick together. And in the end, we have a cool project that um, Travis made that will involve soldering and some hands-on experience that will help you become uh, a soldering master Unlike this person over here, I don't know if you can see um, her, like you definitely will, should not hold your soldering iron um, on the bottom and you should hold it on the grip. Um, here's another image of like someone just sticking their soldering iron into the solder wire, which you also definitely don't want to do, but it looks very tempting. Um, this is what your soldering workstation might look like if you walk, in, walk into like the IEEE lab. Um, so first you have your soldering iron fan and essentially that just sucks in all of the solder fumes so that you don't breathe it in. Um, I highly recommend you getting a solder, um, a fan because one time or actually two times when I was at the lab, I just breathed in the solder fumes because like I was too lazy to turn on the fan and I got a really bad sore throat like the day of. So you definitely want to either use a fan or go to like a window where there's like better ventilation or just hold your breath when you're um, actually soldering. Um, you have the actual solder um, wire that you will melt, um, which is made of tin and lead. And then you have your clamps right here. Um, that's just to hold in your board that you will solder um with in place and then you have your actual like soldering station here so you have your soldering iron your power switch to turn on your soldering iron um you can adjust the temperature that's for like fancier soldering irons um if you have like a cheaper one it's probably just like you plug into like an outlet and um it automatically goes to, like the same pe temperature each time um, you also might have like a soldering iron holder. That's just where you want to place your soldering iron once you're done soldering or you just want to take a really quick break and so that it doesn't burn like your hand or like your table that you're working on. Um, you also have a sponge and a brass tip cleaner. That's basically to get rid of like the dullness and like rust on your soldering iron that uh, might occur over like time and so that it becomes like shiny and um, nice again. And so um, the preparation before you actually use the soldering iron to solder anything, um, you wanna turn on the fan um, first and foremost, then you want to preheat your soldering iron to about 650 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this is probably like the most typical temperature that you will uh, melt solder at. Um, and then once you've done that, you want to clamp the your board or perf board down to, so that's secure and it's easier to solder. And so before you actually start um, getting into the soldering process, um, we're going to go over a couple of correction tools to get rid of the solder if you make a mistake, add too much solder, um, and it's already on the board. The first correction tool is the solder sucker. And like it says, it's in the name, it just sucks up unwanted solder into this tube. Um, right here. 
And the process for doing that is just heating up the solder you want to remove um, and then so that it becomes melted and malleable. Then you want to press on, click on the plunger until you hit here a click um, so that you know um, for sure it's in place. And then once you see that like your solder is melted or molten, you want to place the tip of the desoldering pump against the solder you want to remove, so like right here. And then to actually suck up that solder, you just click on this release button and that solder will just um, go straight up into the tube and you'll be good to re-solder that area again. Um, the second tool is a solder wick or a solder braid. Um, as you can see, it's just braided copper right here. So this will soak up unwanted solder instead of sucking it up. Um, and the process to do that is essentially placing the wick on top of whatever solder joint you want to take solder off. Then you place your hot soldering iron onto that wick. Wait just a few seconds and then the solder will flow off the pin and onto the wick. Um, then once you're done with that, you just remove both items, the iron and the wick, and um, you should be ready um, to be on your way. Okay, so the very first step you want to um, do before you actually use your soldering iron, you want to clean it to get rid of the dullness and make it shiny again. Um, so you would use either the sponge, a wet sponge, or a brass, the brass wool, like you see right here. And that just removes like the oxide or a dried resin. Um, and then after that, you want to tin your soldering iron by applying a thin layer of solder. And what this will do is just act as a heat transfer medium so that it'll be easier to um, transfer the solder onto your board. Okay, and the second step is actually creating the solder joint. So you want to first heat the pad with your soldering iron, and then you place the solder wire in contact with the pad, not the iron. And then um, once you do that, you will let the solder melt onto the pad, then you remove your solder and then you remove your iron. And it seems like a really complicated, like, or not complicated, but like a long process, like five steps, but it's actually like done within like probably like three or five seconds. Um, it's like, it's a lot easier than what it sounds. And a couple of tips that um, you might uh, want to use is that if a solder does not stick on your pad, do not keep trying to put your solder onto the pad. Um, if you apply too much heat to your circuit board, you can either di damage the components um, or even melt off the metal pads so that you can't even solder back again. Um, and then second tip, just make sure the solder melts from the heat of the pad and not directly from touching the iron. And if you do encounter like the solder not sticking on the pad, just remove your iron. Um, it shouldn't be on there for more than like five seconds. So remove your iron and then wait probably like three or four seconds because um, it will probably cool down by then. And then um, go at it, put your soldering iron back onto your pad. And so here are an example, is an example of like good versus bad joints that you will see. So a good soldering joint um, will look like a volcano shape. Um, it's shiny and your component is going to be pulled through your board all the way. Um, you'll see that in like um, the project, the hands-on part at the end. And then um, just make sure once again, solder is melted from the heat of the pad, not from touching the iron. And if you don't do that, then you might get a bad solder joint. So it will look pretty dull or speckled, something kind of like this. Um, and you might even get a cold joint so what this means is just a blob of solder around this joint right here. And it looks like it's connected, but it isn't. So you won't have like your component right here is not actually connected to your pad. And that's like pretty bad because you think one thing, but it's actually another. Um, and if you have, if you put too little solder to essentially make like a cone volcano shape, um, you might get something like this and your component won't be connected once again. And so now here's our question for our Amazon gift card. Get your fingers ready to type in the chat um, and make sure you explain why. 
So what is the very, very first step in the soldering process and why do you do that? All right, it seems like Maya replied first. Oh, Andrew Tran, you want to breathe in solder fumes? Oh, yes. Um, so as a disclaimer, don't ever breathe in solder fumes if you can help it. But uh, <laughs> the first uh, roll of solder that I ever soldered with was one of my grandfather's from probably like the 1970s. And it had a really pleasant smell uh, when you were soldering with it. And that was before I learned that you should have a fan on. But uh, <clears throat> yes, have a, have a fan on. Don't listen to me. <laughs> it smells good, actually. It's like sweet, but that's why it's addicting. <laughs> OK, I will let you screen share now, Travis. Sounds good. OK. All righty, hopefully you guys can all see that. So this part's going to be pretty quick. I'm just going to go over a couple things before we do a Kahoot. And then after that, I'll actually walk you guys through a live demo of soldering. So we can we can do it together and feel confident about it. Um, but first of all, let's talk about placing uh, electronics. So you'll notice that you have a bunch of different components uh, that you're going to put in your board. And some of them you just stick straight in uh, and you can't really bend the leads. But here's an easy way for things like resistors and capacitors. You can actually have your component uh, stick into the board. So your first step is always going to be bending the legs. As you can see uh, on, on the side, the person is gripping the resistor in the middle and then just pushing the, pushing the legs down um, so that it can fit evenly in the space on the board where the resistor is supposed to go. Uh, and that's just standard protocol from whenever you're starting to solder in a resistor. But you might notice that your resistor falls out when you turn the board over to solder. And so one solution for that is that you can bend the legs of the resistor outward at the base. And so this will hold your resistor in there for you. And it will also actually have the added benefit of making it a little bit easier for you to reach the pad uh, with your soldering iron. Because sometimes the pads are a little bit small. And I think the, the pads on the PCB that I made are actually a little bit small. Uh, so yeah, you can see how he's doing that over here. And then all you have to do after that is just touch your soldering iron to the pad and the component, and then put a little bit of solder on there and you're good to go. And then your last step after you do that will simply be to remove the legs. So hopefully you guys have a wire stripper, not a wire stripper, a wire cutter somewhere around the house or a pair of scissors that you really don't care about um, to do that process with. Alrighty, so here's a couple things uh, about our project. In case you haven't seen it, it is a little light up IEEE sign like this. Eh, it's not going well with the virtual background, but in, in theory, you can also snap to turn it on and off due to the microphone on there. And there's also a little potentiometer, a little potentiometer uh, on there. You can adjust the blinking rate. So I'm not going to demonstrate that though at the moment. So there's a couple things that I'm going to talk about uh, before we get into this. Uh, so there's are certain components that actually have polarities, which means that it matters which side you put in which hole. Uh, resistors don't. Those are marked by the little R3 and R1 and so on. It doesn't matter which direction you put those in. Um, but for things like our capacitors, C1 and C2, it does matter. Uh, and for our integrated circuits, our ICs, it does matter. And for our LEDs, it also matters. So one thing to note is that for our capacitors on this particular board, the square pad will be the negative side of the capacitor. And I can get into how you'll recognize that in a minute. For the ICs, you'll notice that on the board, uh, there is a little notch in where the IC outlines are. Uh, and there's also a corresponding notch on both your headers, which are these little, I don't know if you can see it, but the little uh, sort of sockets that you can put the ICs in that you have. Those also have the little notch that allows you to match it up with where it's supposed to be on the board. Um, let's see. Also, I gave you a battery clip. Uh, I've labeled the spots where you're supposed to put that as ground and nine volts. So the red lead from the battery clip will go to the nine volt uh, labeled port and the black lead will go to the ground labeled port. And if anybody's having any questions about this, please stop me. Check the chat real quick. Uh, all right, we're good. Uh, yes. So one thing to add, don't plug in your battery when you're soldering. 
just don't do just plug in your battery at the end yes this is very true all right um let's see okay last thing the leds also have polarity but it should be really easy to tell how to put them in because the led outlines on the board have a flat side uh, and a rounded side and you'll notice if you pick up the leds they also have a round uh, and a flat side so that should be pretty simple let's see uh, also, my original design for the circuit, if you see LED 30 right in the middle of the board, it had sort of an indicator LED that would flash once uh, when, you, uh, when you clapped or snapped. I decided not to do that in the end because it's just too bright and it really doesn't serve much of a purpose. So you, you should be able to leave it empty. Um, but if you're feeling ambitious, we can do something called a solder bridge over it. And that'll just give you a little bit of practice with that. And I'll go over what that is during the hands-on demo. And of course, as we're doing this, or even afterwards, if you're having any issues, then just reach out to Jack or I, and we'll be happy to help you out. And even if you have some other kit that isn't this particular kit, we can also help you out with that. All right, I think that's it. So, safety. Yes, do not uh, have your battery in when you're soldering. That is just a bad idea in general. Uh, I know most of you probably don't have solder fans. I really don't either. So make sure if you're soldering, try to be near an open window. I'm gonna open my window. I start soldering in a minute. Uh, also wash your hands after you solder before eating or anything like that because solder does have lead in it. So we wanna avoid consuming that. Um, this is probably common sense, but don't touch the tip of the soldering iron when it's hot or even in the few minutes after you've soldered because uh, I've actually done that before and it's not particularly fun. So take my word for it. And I think that is about it. We can probably get started with the Kahoot if we have no more questions. Yes, I think we can get started with the Kahoot and then I will get my camera set up uh, so we can do the soldering demo. Let's stop my share. Oh, did, you, did you want me to share the Kahoot or are you gonna do that? If you could, yes. I like it. Okay, I'll get, get that my... right now. Great. I need to log in quick. All right, guys, bear with us for a sec. And we'll be giving out another Amazon gift card after this Kahoot as usual. So get excited for that. Sorry, I'm still logging in. Almost there, though. This meeting is being recorded. I'm going to hoot. And then I will. OK. I'm the host. I'm going to share my screen right now. Can you guys see my the code screen? Yes, looks good. Oh, okay, okay. Perfect. Okay, all sent. Where's chat? Who's hippopotamus? Fumes, I like that. All right, I'm going to wait until we got 
there should be 20 people joined. Yeah. Also, if you want to type in the chat, if you've been to a workshop this quarter already, just type in like me or like one or anything, just so like I can see um, if you've already been to one. Ooh, Maya went to the PC design. Oh, thank you, Dominic, for going to both of the previous ones. We, I like that. Yay. I'm glad. Okay, I'm going to start right now. If anyone has any object objections, please just type in the chat right now. They're getting on. Okay, I will assume no one is still logging in. In three, two, one. All right, get your clicks ready. What temperature should you preheat your soldering iron to? 250 to 350, 350 to 450, 650 to 750, or 450 to 550? Yes, 650 to 750. All right, let's see who's at the top. Justin, yeah, and Margo. All right, true or false question. First touch your solder to the board, then the iron. It is false. Corin, Sophia, and Dominic. What are the correction tools for soldering that we mentioned? Solder sucker or and vacuum, solder wick and vacuum, or solder sucker and solder wick. It's a little tricky. Awesome, you guys got it. All right, Dominic, Margo, and Corwin at the top. What is the ideal shape for a good solder joint? A bubble, volcano, square, or rhombus? Ooh, everyone got that. Sophia has a streak with four correct answers. Margo, Dominic, and Corwin dominating. So your joint should have a matte look, true or false? Matte is the opposite of shiny. So your joint should have a shiny look. If it's matte, it's probably a cold solder joint or it's just, um, it's bad soldering practice. Same places. All right, so what is a cold joint? When you don't preheat your iron, um, a blob of solder not making a connection or arthritis. Very tricky. Yes, a blob of solder that's not making a connection. All right, Margo, Dominic, and Preston at the top. Um, what is solder made of? Iron and tin, copper and nickel, aluminum and vibranium, or lead and tin? Awesome, lead and tin. Justin coming up third. All right, last question. You should solder ICs directly to your board. It's a little trick question because we didn't mention it, but I think it's good enough with the context. Yes, so you should not directly solder your ICs um, components directly to your board. You'll probably have like a header that you would stick your IC in and that header will be soldered to your board. But 
usually do not want to solder it directly. And the top three, third place, Trisha, congrats, Noah. Ooh, you got all of them right. And number one is Margo. Margo, please DM me your email so I can um, send you the gift card. All right, I will stop my share so Travis can start his thing. Fantastic. So I would recommend right now, you, one sec, am I muted? Uh, okay, I would recommend right now if you guys can see uh, Travis Grinning's iPhone anywhere um, that you would pin that video because that's going to be where my hands are and that's probably more interesting than my face most of the time. All right, so we're going to get started with the board and I apologize for this sort of being sideways. But anyway, so you can see we have our board right here. Um, all the LEDs are numbered, which doesn't really matter. But where our numbers do start to matter is with our resistors. And that's actually where we're going to begin here. Uh, our resistors are all labeled with R's. So you can see we have R3 right here. Um, we have R1 right here and so on. But probably the even more important numbers in here uh, are actually the numbers in the middle, which give the values of the resistors that we want to put uh, in particular spots. So you'll notice that we have three 330 ohm resistors, a 4.7K ohm resistor, a 100K ohm resistor, a 10K ohm resistor, and a 100 ohm resistor. So I'm not actually going to be uh, going over how to put in all of these, but we'll do an example uh, of how to do them. And then you guys can finish the rest on your own time. So the big question you might be asking yourself right now is how do we know which resistors to solder where? Actually, let me ch check the chat real quick. Um, so the behavior of your circuit will definitely be different if you solder the incorrect resistors, because especially when you're dealing with like a timer circuit like we are right here, a resistor value can change the timing of it. Uh, and so it might not even blink at all. It could be on all the time or just off all the time. Uh, and also for LEDs, if you have too small of a resistance value, they will be blindingly bright or maybe even burn out if it's very, very small. So you, there's usually a reason that circuits are designed with, uh, with certain values of resistors. So I don't know if you guys have encountered the resistor color code before. I'm not going to go too into depth on that, but I'll talk about it a little bit. So you'll notice that each uh, bit of each pack of resistors that you have uh, has bands on it, and those indicate the value of the resistors. So how that works is that you'll notice there's one side that has a metallic, usually gold or silver stripe on it. Uh, and this is the, I'd usually call it the left side of the resistor. So it's the side you don't start reading from. Now on the other side, you'll notice three bands of different colors. So how this works is that the first number in the resistance value uh, of your resistor is the farthest right. And so if I'm remembering correctly right now, uh, yellow corresponds to a four. So I'll know that whatever resistance this is starts with a four. Now the second uh, value, the second color corresponds to a number of the second number uh, in our particular resistance value. And I think this is purple, which is seven. Now the third is where we switch it up a little bit. The third is actually the number of zeros that follow the first two colors. So in our case, this is red, which if I'm remembering correctly is two. So we have a four, a seven, and two zeros. So that's 4,700 ohms or 4.7 kilo ohms. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. If you just look up resistor color code, you can see what all the colors are and their corresponding numbers. So I'm not going to get a lot more into depth on that now, but that's just the general process for it. So if you don't understand that uh, now or later, feel free to reach out and uh, we can help you through it again. Travis, can you put it closer to the camera? Ah, it's sure. kind of like hard to see. Hopefully it'll focus. Okay. okay. Yeah, hey, cool. That actually shows the colors. It's very clear. Awesome. So I'm going to solder in uh, this 4.7K ohm one right here. And so as you might remember, our first step that you, we usually want to do when we're going to solder in a resistor is we're just going to grip it in the middle and then sort of bend the legs of the resistor in like this to where they're somewhat parallel. And then we have this, which we can just conveniently grab by the middle. So what we're then going to do is we're going to find the spot on our board where it goes. So as it turns out, our resistor one right in the middle right here, hopefully you can see that a little bit. All right, that one is actually our 4.7K ohm resistor. So that's where we're gonna put it. 
So all you have to do is line up the legs with the holes and then push it in. And you can see it goes in all the way. So we're not actually going to solder on this side of it though. We're going to solder on the other side. And so we're gonna do what was mentioned in the, in the uh, lecture part, which is bending the resistor legs outward just to make it stick in. And that is correct, Maya, resistors are a non-polar part, which means it does not matter which direction they go in. So if you're uh, really OCD about it, you could make sure that all your resistors have the metallic sides at one end, <laughs> but that's really not necessary. All right, so we've got our first part in. So now it's time to actually bring out the solder, the solder, soldering iron. So I think some of you have kits that had multiple, uh, mul uh, multiple tips on it. And for this particular board, I would recommend going with one of the thinner ones because we don't need to transfer a lot of power to it. And some of these, uh, some of these pads are actually a little small. So if you haven't, uh, haven't yet, open up a window and start heating up your soldering iron. So have, could you put in the chat, by the way, if you have started heating up your soldering iron? It'll usually take up, all right, great. It'll usually take about uh, a minute, minute and a half to heat up. Uh, in Celsius, I usually go to around probably 350, 400 Celsius. I'm not particularly picky with it. I just go about uh, three quarters of the way to the, to the right. Let me show you mine, I can. So this is what mine looks like. I just usually have it up about right here and that's usually hot enough for our purposes. So also, uh, if you have a sponge with your soldering iron, uh, put some water on that. Uh, Cause I've seen a lot of people when they try to clean off their soldering iron, just do it on dry sponges. And then that just blackens your sponge and makes it look ugly. Make sure you never touch the tip of the soldering iron either. Yes, this is very true. Very, and so it, yeah, if some of you, if some of you have the cheaper kits also, make sure that the tip of your soldering iron uh, doesn't come off that little rest because if it lands on plastic, a plastic tabletop or any sort of tabletop, it will melt through it and leave a mark, which will be a nice story for you to tell people, but it doesn't smell particularly good and it lasts forever. So just be careful with that. All right, so I'm assuming that most of you have your soldering irons on. They might not quite be ready yet, but don't freak out. The way I like to test whether or not it's actually hot enough is by touching the tip of my solder um, to my iron like this. And if it melts, you can see steam coming up like that. That means it's ready to go. So you guys can start doing that when you'd like. Uh, and as soon as it actually melts, then just uh, type it in the chat so I can know what your progress is. And we'll wait a little bit until that starts happening. So also question for the chat, uh, what soldering iron kits did you guys get? Did you get the $10 one or the slightly more expensive one? I'd just like to see a percentage in the chat if I could. See one, nice. All right. Seems like there's a general consensus about which one you got. And that actually might be a good thing because I think that one came with some more equipment uh, than the more expensive one did. So if you really like soldering like I do, then eventually you might want to ask for it for Christmas or something or get yourself one. Uh, my particular soldering iron was only like 25 bucks and it works really well. Uh, and it, it can be a lot of fun to build uh, projects with soldering. All right, so we've got two readies. How's everybody else going? Another ready, awesome. So then I will think I'll wait another uh, 30 seconds or so and then I'll just get soldering. Alrighty, so let's get started. So you're just gonna take your soldering iron in your right hand first and take your solder in your left hand. I usually hold it like this, just so I can sort of control where the tip goes. You can even bend the tip down a little bit if you want to uh, be a little more accurate with it. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And then your first step is always going to be touching the iron itself to both the pad and the component. Now, once you've done that, you're just going to touch the tip of the solder to it and then take the tip of the solder away. And you should have a joint. So I'm going to do that with the other one now as well. And I will check my joints afterwards. 
to make sure they're good. All right. Also a quick side note, after doing this, you might notice that there's a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron. There's not much yet, but what you can do after that is just sort of, let me get this over here. Uh, you can just sort of wipe the tip of the iron across the wet sponge uh, and that will remove the extra bits of solder for you if you do it correctly. <laughs> and so that's probably not super necessary yet, um, but as you solder more and more solder builds up, you'll want to do that. So our next step is going to be to actually check the joints. And so my joint on this side, yeah, it's probably tough to see through the camera, but this joint looks quite good. Uh, you can see, maybe you can't, but it's shiny and it looks like a little tent. It tapers up to being smaller at the bottom. Now this one, on the other hand, you might notice, I think I made a connection, uh, but there's not actually quite enough solder for my liking. And so I can just go back and add a little more using the same process that I did the first time. Uh, I'm just going to touch the tip of the iron to the, jo to the joint, and add a little more solder, the rest for a second and then take it away. So hopefully this is going well for everybody so far. If it's not, uh, post your complaints in the chat or just yell angrily with your mic on and uh, that'll accomplish the same thing. Awesome, so now you've made your first soldering joint. Hopefully you're already starting to see that this isn't quite as scary as dealing with molten metal might have seemed in the first place. So great, we've placed our first resistor. Now, if you happen to have uh, any wire clippers laying around, you can already uh, just clip off these leads right here. So what you're gonna want to do is go right to where the top of the soldering joint is and then just clip like that and it falls away. You can do the same for the other one. And there we go, we shortened our leads. That just makes everything a little more convenient for you later on. All right, so is everybody good with uh, how to solder in a resistor? Just put it in the chat if you are, and especially if you aren't. If you're having any troubles at all, just feel free to speak up. Great, I'm seeing the thumbs up. All right, I will take that thumbs up as a general thumbs up from everybody. So I'm not gonna go through the process of soldering in all of these resistors for you because that would kind of be a waste now that you've known, you know how to do one, uh, you pretty much know how to do them all. Now, honestly, it might be most convenient for you if you just soldered in all the resistors at once, um, but for the sake of this demo, I'm going to go on uh, and start soldering in other components. Actually, before I do that, uh, one thing that you might find is that uh, when you put in some of your components that you can't really bend the leads for, like these little headers right here, uh, when you try to flip it over, the components will fall out. And so one thing you can actually do for that is you can take a piece of tape, either painter's tape or regular tape, um, put it across the top of the component, and then just sort of tape it to the board, and then it'll stick when you flip it over. And then you can just do your soldering and then remove the tape afterwards. So that's just a trick for you to use later on if you're having trouble with components falling out of the board. All right, but I think next uh, what I'm going to do is a capacitor. And now resistors, as we mentioned before, are not polar components, which means it doesn't matter which order or which direction you put them in. But our capacitors, on the other hand, are. And part of the reason you can know this is because capacitors, as you can see, uh, have leads of different lengths. Let me see if I can get this to focus. So there's one long lead and one short lead. And also the easier way to remember uh, which side is positive and which is negative is the fact that there is a gray stripe next to one of the leads with a negative sign on it. And this side is always, of course, the negative side of the resistor. So I believe I mentioned before um, that in our particular case, we'll have the uh, negative side or the gray stripe side going to the square pad on our capacitors. And our capacitors are marked uh, C1 and C2. Uh, now, if I recall correctly, um, capacitor one should have a one microfarad mark on it. Uh, and so that'll actually be the, the can one like this. And I believe the capacitor two is just uh, a film capacitor. I don't think I have one of those around here right now, but it's the little uh, component that looks like it has a little sort of a circular medallion on top uh, and is very thin. So the, the thin one's capacitor two, this one uh, should be capacitor number one. So let's place that in real quick. Hopefully this is the right kind. All right, awesome. I'm dealing with spare parts over here uh, in this board. So just push it in all the way. I think these tend to fit pretty snugly. 
So you can just push it all the way in. And then once again, we're going to flip over our board and get started. Ah, certainly, yes, uh, that might be a little bit confusing. So you'll notice on, on this side of the board, let me get this under here again. Uh, on this side of the board, the left side of the board, uh, the, the capacitor says capacitor one, and it has a one microfarad marking underneath it. Uh, that should correspond to the one microfarad marking on the capacitor, which looks like this, the electrolytic capacitor. Does that make sense? And yes, negative N does go to the square pad. However, the other capacitor uh, goes to the film capacitor, which is just, uh, it's, it's nonpolar as well. So it doesn't matter which side you put in where. And if you have trouble recognizing the, uh, the film capacitor, then just let me know. It should, it's this little tiny thin piece um, that has like a, a little circle on top. Actually, I have my other board over here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I take back what I'm what I said. That was a different circuit. So both of them are actually uh, both of them are actually cans. So, but one of them is Mark One microfarad, and the other one. What is the other value? The other one's ten microfarad. So I apologize for that. I was remembering a different circuit. This one is clearly marked as one microfarad. And hopefully, you can see that on the side right here. And then this one is marked as ten microfarad. So write that down if you uh, might have trouble remembering it. Or just read the board, because you only have two capacitors. Uh, I believe that's a voltage rating, actually. Uh, it's rated up to 50 volts. Uh, so, so yeah, if you have a circuit that's dealing with high voltage, higher voltage, you're going to want to have a different capacitor than that. So I apologize for the confusion on that. Hopefully, that's clear to everybody. And thank you for asking the question. So let's just get to work soldering this. So one thing to note is, and don't be nervous about this at all, is that uh, capacitors are just a tiny little bit more delicate than resistors are for soldering purposes. So you don't want to leave your soldering iron on there for too long. So, I mean, five seconds is probably still fine, uh, but just don't leave it on for much longer than that. Uh, resistors are very hardy. It's actually kind of difficult to burn out a resistor. So those you can just sort of mess around with, but capacitors, you just want to be a tiny bit more careful with. And once again, don't be nervous about that. Um, just bear it in mind a little bit. So we're going to go through the same process that we did last time. Just take your solder in your left hand or right hand if you're right-handed and your soldering iron in your right and then touch your soldering iron to the prospective joint and then put your solder on it, let it flow and then remove. And once again, we're going to do the same thing for the other joint. There we go. And we made our connection. Well, hopefully everything is still going swimmingly for all you guys. Great, so then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to remove uh, the leads now that I've, at, that I've soldered them in. Great, so hopefully that is going well for you guys. If it's not, then just stop me. Um, if it is going well, then I will continue again. So we mentioned in the Kahoot, although we hadn't really mentioned before, that you don't want to solder your ICs directly onto your board. This is because ICs are by far the most uh, delicate part that you're going to be dealing with. And so what you're going to want to do instead is solder these things called headers directly into your board. Um, they're kind of like sockets for ICs. And then after, at the end, after you soldered everything on your board, you're going to plug the ICs into these headers. And then theoretically, your circuit should be able to work after that. Now do note that both these headers uh, and your ICs and actually the outlines on the board all have a divots or have divots or half circles on the top. So you need, do need to be very careful with the directionality of all these chips. So I'm going to get started with one of the smaller headers right here. Uh, and this is one of the ones for our 555 timers. It's just a four by two header. So I'm going to take a look at my board. I'm going to see that the header has a semicircle at the top right here. And then I'm going to match that with a semicircle right here and drop it in. So this is one of those times where it might be convenient to have tape around to tape this part down. I don't have tape with me at the moment, so I'm just going to uh, hope that I can do it without that. So I'll carefully flip it over. Um, cool. All right, so I've got it down now. Uh, I'm going to take my solder in my hand. And 
and get to work. Awesome. So once you've soldered your first leg onto one of these ICs, then it's stable. So you don't actually need to have the tape on anymore because one of the legs is stuck in. Hopefully that makes sense. And that may be gonna stick it in a little further right here. And remember, if there's too much solder accumulating on the end of your iron, then just go over to your wetted sponge or uh, to your bucket of iron shavings or whatever that is, and then stick it in there to remove the extra solder. And yes, that is a, a good point that Jackie is mentioning. If you're left-handed, you probably want to do things differently than me, and uh, you want to hold your soldering iron in your dominant hand. So if you're left-handed, you probably want to hold it in your left. Of course, uh, whatever feels more comfortable to you is probably the way to go. So if something else is better, then uh, feel free to do that. So after we've soldered in a single uh, pin on our headers, we're just gonna continue to do the rest. And I'll do those relatively quickly, I think. Apologies for all the smoke that's coming up at the moment. Do try not to breathe that in if it's happening for you. All right, there we go. Let me see if I can get this up here. Hopefully that's clear. We soldered in all of the pins right here. All the joints are shiny and relatively tentish. And there's been connections made on all of them. I do apologize for the lack of focus here. Like my phone camera was meant for this. Okay, so if anybody's having any issues at all so far, then let us know in the chat. Otherwise, I will wait about 30 seconds and then move forward. So I know some people who are kind of scared of the process of soldering, and hopefully, just this project and getting exposed to it early will make you realize that soldering is actually one of the most fun things. Um, that as EEs we get to do that a lot of other people don't. Um, it's very enjoyable. One of my hobbies is music and actually I've gotten several uh, pedal board kits that I've been able to solder myself um, uh, for guitar pedals. So it's a really fun thing to do as a hobbyist as well as just for things like Micro Mouse or, or other uh, responsibilities. So it's just an awesome skill to have. And also as you get better at it, if there are cables or something that are broken in the middle, then you can sometimes even uh, repair cables for people. And it's just a, it's all around a very useful skill to have. All right, so we soldered in the first header, um, just, just because I'm going to do this other header as well. Um, this is our eight by two header right here. Once again, notice that it has a notch and there is a notch uh, on the outline of the board too on the top, although it's a little bit more difficult to see. So make sure you're lining that up correctly. All right, we're gonna drop it in. And as I said before, tape really makes this a lot easier. I'm having to use my hands here and it's just a bit of a pain. All right, awesome. First connection, cool. All right, we made our first connection there. I'm going to carry on and solder the rest of the pins right now. As per usual, if anybody runs into any issues, just holler. So if it doesn't make sense to you why we're cleaning off our soldering iron occasionally, um, you will notice that once in a while, uh, a large amount of solder starts to accumulate on the tip of your iron. And you might not think that this is a big issue because some of it'll just come off next time. Um, but actually, if you leave too much on uh, and it builds up and it all comes off at once, you might end up with a cold joint. And that is something that we want to avoid because that's actually really difficult to diagnose sometimes. And that can be a big re reason why your circuit isn't working.
Awesome. So do you guys want to give me updates in the chat uh, about what stage you're at, or how your progress is going? Just so I can gauge how things are happening. Or you can always turn on your camera and make weird faces at me. I appreciate that. Awesome headers, sounds good. So I'll give it about 30 seconds and then uh, solder in an LED for us so we can take a look at how that works. Awesome. So our next component that we're going to be talking about is LEDs. You're probably familiar with these uh, already, but you may not have soldered them before. So a couple things to know uh, is first of all, they are about as, uh, about as delicate as the capacitors are. So don't worry too much about it, but just don't leave the soldering iron on them forever. Uh, and you'll be fine. And the other thing is you'll notice that it might be kind of small, but each uh, LED has a side that has a flat edge to it. Uh, and they said as a round edge, and that's reflected uh, on the board. So you're going to want to make sure that you're matching your LEDs up to that correctly uh, with how they're listed on the board. And I believe that in our case, the long side uh, goes to the rounded side of the LED uh, on, on the board, and the flat side goes to the, flat, the uh, shorter side. Hopefully I said that correctly. And the weird thing about LEDs is actually this is not like a standard thing across parts. So you do sometimes have to check, uh, have to look it up just to be sure. I don't know why that is. Okay, so we're just going to solder in uh, one of our LEDs. And fortunately, the pads actually uh, for our LEDs are slightly bigger than the pads are for our resistors. So I don't think it will be necessary to bend our leads out of the way to access the pads this time. So I'm just going to leave them straight up like this. Number one, and number two. Cool, so that was pretty simple. There we go. So hopefully you guys are getting a good sense of the fact that this really isn't all that complicated. Uh, and can be kind of fun. So I don't have extras uh, of all the rest of the parts. So I'm just gonna briefly go over anything that you guys might need to know uh, about the rest of these parts. So the first thing to remember is, as I mentioned last time, uh, we have a ground, uh, let me see. We have a ground label right here and a nine volt label right here on these pins. And your ground uh, label will go to the black lead of our battery clip and your nine volt will go to the red lead of our battery clip. And now it's up to you whether you solder these uh, on the top or the bottom. For my particular board that I did, I actually soldered them on the bottom just so it was a little bit more out of the way. Uh, and that is just the same process, except you do your soldering on the top of the board and stick them through the bottom. But that's, that's a matter of personal choice. All right, and once again, if you do connect the battery lead at this time, make sure you don't actually put in the battery until everything else is soldered. So a couple more things. We have a switch over here labeled S1. Uh, and the switches are bi-directional. It does not matter which direction you solder them in. Uh, so that's just one thing to note. Uh, let me see. You'll see a microphone component in there, which looks like a little round tin can with felt on the top. Uh, and it should be clear which direction that goes in because of the outline. Um, but just in case it isn't, make sure you are looking at the outline when you put that in. Uh, we have two transistors right here. Uh, the transistors have semicircular tops. So uh, they're the little black components with three leads. Hopefully you can recognize those. Uh, and our particular transistors that we use, uh, they, their, need, their leads are kind of narrow together. So when you're gonna put those in, you're going to need to sort of separate the uh, outer two leads, just pull them aside a little bit to fit through the holes. 
uh, and then push them down. There will be a little bit of a gap between the board and the black plastic piece, but that's fine. That's just how, how transistors are. Um, let me see. As I mentioned before, LED 30, we're not going to be worrying about. Um, it, it's just not necessary. And I think uh, detracts from the experience of this light. Uh, and I think second to last thing, uh, you might notice a little square blue plastic piece in there. That's what's called a potentiometer. And I'll show it on my board. So you can see right here is that square blue plastic piece. It's called a potentiometer. In case you're not familiar with that, um, that means you have a, uh, a resistor that is, uh, it's adjustable. It's a variable resistor is how people say potentiometer. Um, so let's see, anything else? Um, okay, I think I can go over the concept of a solder bridge real quick. It shouldn't be necessary, but if you want to get adventurous with it, you can. So the idea of a solder bridge uh, is connecting two pads that are close to each other uh, without using a wire. So you'd basically just make pulling solder from one edge of it um, to the other. And we'll see if I can actually do this on camera. But the idea of that is you're gonna put a lot more solder than you usually would on one of the pads or on both of the pads and then just sort of drag across so that the solder melts together and you get a joint over both of them. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, all right, let me get to that real quick. So let's see if I can do this well for you. So I'm gonna pull down the camera a little bit if I can. Okay, the angle's a bit wonky, that's a little better. Okay, there, we're a little bit closer up. So as long as I don't burn my camera with my soldering iron, we'll be good to go. Okay, so if we're going to do a solder bridge, what we're first gonna to want to do is put solder on each pad. like this, just put a good amount of solder on there. All right, so each each pad should now have some solder on it. Hopefully you can see that. Then what you can do from there is just keep on adding solder and making sure it's melted until the two form a connection. All right, unsuccess that time. So we'll go back to that in a second. And so, as I mentioned, this is slightly more advanced and it'll take a few tries to get some times. There we go. All right, so I actually used a good amount of solder on there. So you can see we've got a nice and shiny joint on top that runs from one to the other. Um, do we have to do this for LED 30? You do not have to do this for LED 30. If you're interested in trying out a new technique, you can, but I believe the circuit should work without it. So yeah, just get everything working first, it should work. And yeah, if you're adventurous, then do it. Um, well, technically my original design had uh, a blink LED that would light up as soon as uh, it heard a clap or a snap, but I didn't like how that turned out in practice and it was just an extra LED. Um, so I decided not to, I believe the resistor is still on the board though. Um, so it's just totally optional to short it or not. And, oh boy, Sophia, I am so sorry that you do not have two capacitors. Is that just checking? Everybody else has two capacitors, right? And didn't make some sort of large scale mistake. All right, great. Uh, I wonder if it got, fell out in the mail somewhere. Hopefully not. Are you sure it's not in the bottom of your bag still? You probably are, but wait, Corwin has three. I think we may have our explanation. That is unfortunate. So, um, yeah, it's DigiKey right there. I 
guess I can I can look up if it's Amazon too. So yeah, I, DigiKeeper, all these are best way to go because they just sell parts a whole lot cheaper. Hopefully shipping doesn't cost all that much. If it's more than a couple bucks, then just talk to us again and I'll try to Venmo you something for it. So that's my bad. But, um, but as it goes, I think that's all the demo portion uh, of this particular uh, workshop. So hopefully everything's still going swimmingly for all you guys. Uh, we can definitely stay for a little while longer uh, as you guys complete your kits. Uh, I'll just turn off my demo camera.